Oh. Mm, it's that time. It's almost that time. What time is it? 4.17. 16.17. 16.17. Mm. Oh, yeah. That'd make a good shirt. Sixteen twenty. Sixteen twenty. Yep. I like 16, it. Sixteen nineteen. Got a minute. Sixteen nineteen. Got a minute. We got a minute. We've got two minutes. Two minutes. Until four twenty on this the sixth day of four twenty twenty. 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 <laughs> or something. We're really gonna live it up today. Oh look, somebody's watching already. Hello. Happy 420. Happy 420. In I, two minutes. In two minutes. Uh, good time to introduce myself, as always, the commander in chief, GI Mary Jane, and Zig, who is actually a GI. I just have GI issues. Shh, don't tell anybody. But we got two minutes until 420, and thank you to uh, the few of you who have already tuned in. We're going to talk about some fun stuff today. Some cool things happen at a food bank. I don't know if it's cool or some interesting things happen. Some in stuff happens. Some stuff and some things happen. Some bad things happen in Pennsylvania to a young Maryland lady. We'll save the bad news for the end. Maybe. And uh, a cool chart was published that is supposed to explain to you what zone of fear you are in during this, the Corona apocalypse. But we're not in fear because we have... We have weed, and it keeps us calm. Definitely keeps us calm. Oh, we've got one minute. You guys, make sure at 420, you're not only sparking up your pipe, but you're also sharing this on your wall with your friends. I uh, have the Freedom Hotline, as always, and we'll be doing what I can to keep up with your comments and answer your questions. And smoke some weed, right? Every day. Right? We're getting really close, brah. Yeah, I can see it. Tick, tick, tick. Oh, oh 420! Oh, I can hit it. Because <laughs> you can't possibly smoke unless it's in the Constitution. You can't smoke. It's in my Constitution. It's this is an awesome pipe, Zig. Where'd you get this? I got that in Quartzsite, Arizona, I believe. That is awesome. It's just a square, basically square steamroller. I dig it, dude. Um, I think that's where I got it. I don't know. Maybe Reno. I've traveled a lot. No. <laughs> no. Oh, Joshua Sands is joining us. Hello, it's me. Watching from Virginia. The state beside the sea. I didn't sing that right because I don't know what song you have in mind there, Josh. But hey, you from Virginia. I'm so sorry. I know the laws are really shitty there, but I heard that they did just decriminalize in Virginia. So... At least you know you can't end up in handcuffs for personal possession anymore. That's good. I was about to be a bitch and hit this again, so maybe you should. <laughs> you or, would never. I know, I know. For those not that, on 4 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. It's just totally not in my style to do anything like that. <laughs> I do have a bad habit of bogarting the pipe, but it's just because I'm so used to smoking by my lonesome, and it's <laughs> awesome to not smoke <laughs> by your lonesome. And we've been uh, in official quarantine for what now? About a month. About a month. About a month. We finally made it to the Garden of Freedom, so we're home. Finally. Finally. We're amongst the like-minded. We're amongst friends. We're amongst people who believe in freedom and inclusion. And uh, that's a good thing. So Joshua Sam said up in terms of Virginia decriminalization that it is on the governor's desk. Oh, and it has to be signed by Saturday. That's awesome, Josh. Definitely going to. So if the governor doesn't sign, does he have to sign or... I, if he doesn't, does it go away? I'm curious. Generally, in the state of Maryland, I've never done any legislative work in Virginia, but in the state of Maryland, once the bill is passed and approved by the House, the Senate committee, it has to be signed. There's Governor a, can't veto it last second. I don't. You know, I'm really not sure. Hmm. I, I don't. I don't think so in Maryland. But Maryland has a really, I don't want to say goofy legislative process because I think they're all fucking goofy. Uh, but a much different legislative process. What are they doing to Goofy? That what are they doing to Goofy? What is Goofy? That poor is, dog. Is Goofy a dog or I heard that Goofy is supposed to be a cow. So Joshua says if he doesn't, it's automatic. So what's the point of having a governor? Um, ben Garo, Garo, Garo. Garo. He, <laughs> he is with us. Hi Ben. Hi Ben. Welcome. 
An hour behind, but still with you guys. Yeah, and we're like four hours late. I try to do the broadcast, wait, five? But I try to do my broadcast every day at 11. Uh, but like I said, we just got here to the Garden of Freedom not long ago, and it's been a lot of unpacking and preparing and settling in after... A month. Of just floating, trying to figure out where to go. Boondocking and floating and, and not knowing where to go and not being able to go to the gym. And <coughs> it's just awful. It's just awful. Glenn Guerrera says, hi, H-I-G-H. That's the only time I'm not a grammar Nazi. The only time. I hate that. H-I asterisk. H-I-G-H. <laughs> <laughs> because Getting it's there. always good to be high. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it's harder than the other one, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, fuck. We are smoking on... Um, Professor Chaos. Professor Chaos. From <coughs> beautiful Arizona, uh, where, unfortunately, recreational is not legal. Um, but as a patient, I am able to keep myself. We can keep ourselves healthy through nature uh fun story arizona and we talked about this yesterday has reciprocity which is a fancy word for respecting patients from other states uh, but they only have reciprocity in the sense bless you in the sense that if you're in possession and you're a registered patient in a different state you can't be you know held criminally liable held criminally liable for being in possession however you cannot access the cannabis market i told everybody that i've been in talks with um arizona normal which is great they were super responsive uh, but then the question came up as to whether or not you know growing is okay for patients because in maryland patients can't grow right colorado patients can grow um and i know that varies from state to state so was oregon they can uh, Washington, I don't think they can. Um, California, they can. Which is crazy to me how a group of guys and gals who have nothing to do with your life can tell you that you can't put a seed in the ground. Nope, that's no illegal. No matter what nope. it is. Can't grow a plant. Can't do it. Keep in mind, too, they don't just come after you if they catch you distributing it. If you're growing it and just using it for yourself, they can still come after you federally. Yeah. And they do it with guns. Victimless crime. No one's being hurt. In fact, people are being helped. And they will come to your house with guns and take your property, kidnap you, and then extort money from you. Yeah. It's like a ransom. It's like a ransom. I had the civilian platoon 420 flag up yesterday, and I've got the shirt on today. And, I mean, that's what we're all about. Um, the website's been put on hold because of the travel and the corona apocalypse and coronaphobia. Uh, but generally, we try to report the drug war news from the perspective of us, the victims. And when I say us, I mean anybody watching who's been a victim of prohibition, either directly or indirectly. I mean, if you've been stopped from utilizing your cannabis in any way that you feel is safe, then you're you're really a victim to these laws. Um, but in terms of Arizona, and this is, this is goofy, Zig looked this up for me right before... We started the broadcast. Thank you for being so studious. Oh, that's me. You're awesome. Um, so this comes from uh, a legal website for a particular law group whom I am not going to plug because I don't know them. Uh, but <coughs> they say <clears throat> the first step to legally growing marijuana in the state of Arizona is to have to go through understanding of who is actually allowed to do so. Blah, blah, blah. Law group has encountered many individuals who have been found themselves in trouble with the law because they were mistaken under the impression that they were allowed to do things that are actually illegal and growing of marijuana is no exception. You know, God forbid a human being think they could put a seed in the soil again. <laughs> uh, it goes on to say Arizona's Medical Marijuana Act is very clear about the fact that only qualifying patients who live more than 25 miles away from a legally recognized marijuana dispensary may cultivate medical marijuana. So that means if you're 25 miles away from, from access, then they give you the okay to do so. But in order to do it at your house, you actually but, have to get permission from the state of Arizona before you do it. So just because you're 25 miles or more from a dispensary doesn't mean you can just, okay, I'm going to grow now. You still have to go through the process to get the thumbs up from the fed or from the government 
to get permission, which From is pretty clear government. if your address falls within or falls outside of those parameters. Yeah, I wonder when they would say no. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you know, 24.9 miles away. So yeah. too bad. So sad. Yeah, it says either patient or patient <clears throat> caregiver must first be approved by the state to do so. Key takeaway here is that you must meet specific requirements in order to legally grow marijuana. So I don't know if those requirements mean anything more than just the mileage parameters or if it has something to do with your condition. For instance, um, I suffer from Crohn's disease amongst uh, one of the things that I utilize cannabis for besides a healthy lifestyle in general. Um, and in Maryland, if you're a Crohn's patient, instead of only being allowed to pick up the allotted two ounces a month, your doctor can put it up as much as a half pound and... Uh, so they, they give you um, allotments and Crohn's is one of those chronic cases like cancer would be or, or, or folks who have seizures where the, you know, the, the medicine's not enough in the flower and they need to get massive amounts of concentrate. Um, but yeah, it looks like you have to get a permission slip, a second permission slip. You would think that after paying... First being a patient is one permission slip. Then you need a second one to, you know, make your own medicine at home. Yeah, and then I wonder if there's any procedure where, like, they come and check on your plants or something. Right? I wonder if there's, like, quarterly inspections or... Are you growing too much? Who knows if there's using? an audit. It's like we've given up all the rights of our privacy to... Our governments, and that varies state by state, county by county. I mean, hell, even growing up in the days of prohibition, where weed was absolutely illegal everywhere, it didn't matter. You still have a lot of cases of cops and judges turning a blind eye to cannabis because they know that it's a victimless, nonviolent crime. And in fact, if you ask a lot of police officers who work in a big city, my father having been one of them, he, he wished that everybody was smoking pot instead of the other hard drugs that, you know, you're more prone to violence. And I'm not drug shaming to each their own, uh, but it's factual that you are very, very, very... Less prone to violence on marijuana. Absolutely. It's... Glenn said, I hope that's not Corona cough. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Let me put my mask You know, on. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> We're sharing a bowl and a living um, space and coffee Yeah, you know, and... <laughs> that's a, I, I, if I, I'm going to make a strain of cannabis, and I'm going to call it Corona Cough 2020 or something, because <laughs> I think that would be great. <laughs> you know, now that you know I'm in Arizona, maybe once I get through the whole process and get my first and second area and third area and fourth area <laughs> permission slip. Uh, maybe all your hall passes. My all my hall passes from the hall monitor. Maybe we can um maybe we can play with some strains. You know who knows. Yeah, that'd be fun. Everybody seems to think that I'm like this, like genius master of of growing and um nope, no clue, no clue. Um, I know a lot of the scientific stuff, but only from what I've heard. Um, and when I've researched myself to make myself feel better. Um, but I've, I've never grown. Like I didn't even put, you know, that seed in the backyard in high school. Like a lot of, a lot of us did. Right. Uh, but I've, I've helped caretake for a lot of, uh, uh, gardens, if you will, uh, crops, um, over the years. And I'll tell you what, man, the, the plant itself has such a personality. Have you ever grown like anything else? Flowers? I've grown like, weed. Um, I haven't grown too much else. Right. <laughs> my green thumb is like green for weed, but nothing else. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother, was, like, she had a green thumb. So we did like chrysanthemums and water lilies and lavender. And, um, you know, I've grown that. And, and plants are fun because they have their own little personality. But, but weed in particular just has this amazing personality. Like you actually interact with the plant. Like you can you can tell when they're happy and they can tell when you're happy and it shows in the growth and it shows in the final product and maybe i sound freaking batshit crazy but um it's the truth man it's incredible um so that being said oh shit my mouth ah gross that's I all mean, right it's 14 or it's 4 30 <laughs> but of no that's therapeutic so say you've got you know and maybe maybe you can relate to this or I don't know, understand, appreciate it because, you know, being a service member, right? You come back and they tell you to like find a hobby, find something to do with your hands. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, right? they do. So what better to, to garden, right? I, I'm sure like, a, 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 maybe not you, but I know I've had therapists tell me, you know, go ahead and garden. Well, well, I have known veterans to actually get into growing their own medicine. Yeah, um, there's. And it's therapeutic. 
and in areas where it's legal it'd be great to see like a veteran farm cannabis farm where veterans can go to learn how to grow that's a thing that's actually a thing in a lot of places i know there's the veterans green bus um and that got Ugh, that got destroyed two years ago by some bottle kids that were... Well, that's sad. Yeah, it was really sad. It was really sad. We should have... Um, we should have him on. I haven't talked to this gentleman in a while. Now I'm I'm stoned, so I can't remember names. Sorry. Oh, but yeah, I mean, cannabis is huge in the veteran community. But just in mental health in general, you know, uh, if, if, if patients, people who are struggling with their emotions... Um, had the opportunity and the it was legal to actually grow this and, and experience the therapeutic benefits from growing the plant. And then the final product is medicinally great for, you know, so you got your mind, right? You're doing good with your mind because you're gardening. It's good for your head. Body, you, the final product actually helps your body. Um, and, and then soul, I mean, that's kind of all intertwined. And even if you could grow the stalks, the leaves you can juice that stuff dude mm -hmm. maybe i wouldn't have to smoke as much because if i could juice and put that nutritional value into my smoothies in the morning uh, my my, my flare-ups all my my intestinal issues might not be so common or so frequent um it's it's uh, i complain about it every day we should stop complaining, should stop complaining. <laughs> session with y'all in maryland What's up, Michael? What are you smoking on? Maryland, my hometown. Oh, speaking of Maryland. Ugh. Maryland. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but... Maryland isn't so merry recently. Uh, recently, I mean in general, but we're seeing news stories where they're stopping the arrest of nonviolent victimless crimes because they don't want to expose people. And we just found a story right before we went live that says completely the opposite. It breaks um, my heart. Perhaps it's because there's a Maryland <laughs> woman in Pennsylvania. Um, <clears throat> Maryland woman was arrested in King of Prussia, which I had to look that up. Apparently, it's a city in Pennsylvania. Sounds hot. <clears throat> King of Prussia with $200,000 worth of high-grade uh, marijuana. $200,000 worth This of woman from Edgewater, Maryland, faces felony charges of possession with intent to deliver criminal use of a communication facility and related drug charges. Criminal use of a communication facility. Criminal use of a. This doesn't is that even a, make is sense. That, did, to you, me. did she use a payphone? This doesn't even make a sense. A communication to me. facility, maybe uh, a library email. I have no idea. Well, maybe here's my question: What? What? How did? What was she doing that was so horrible that they stopped her to find this cannabis on her? I don't know. Um, apparently, a joint <laughs> investigation. A joint investigation. A joint investigation into a large scale drug trafficking by the Upper Marion Township Police Department Special Investigations Unit. That's a mouthful. Blech. And the Montgomery County Detective Bureau uh, determined that the defendant who would be traveling to Upper Marion Township April 3rd to deliver 100 pounds of high grade marijuana. According to this release. Sounds like they were wiretapping or something. Right. Someone probably just told on her. Isn't that a terrorist act? Yeah, I mean. Just in and of itself. I'm not talking about written law. But, but listening in on somebody's phone conversation with. Terrorism is using violence for political means. And that's what happened here. Hmm. They show up at your vehicle, your house. Guns in your face. Maybe dogs. And they're not police officers at that point. They're in full tactical gear like I was dressed in combat. Um, so that's how they approach you. And then they restrain you. And then they take your property and hold you ransom. So they found her vehicle, followed her to a location. Um, and then her. Yeah, they stalked her. Okay, okay. And then to a parking garage where she met with uh, two others to complete this transaction. Um, not sure if these two others were undercover officers or not because Sounds they like didn't get arrested. Arrest. There was no other arrests that have been voiced. So, uh, sounds like a setup. Well, hey, yeah, sure, I'll take your stuff and then take you to jail. Um, 
But she had a, she had a hundred pounds on her. A hundred pounds of high quality marijuana were found in, in her vehicle. Vacuum sealed. Street value of two hundred thousand dollars. I need to do this math. A <laughs> hundred pound, two hundred gram. Um, this investigation determined that the defendant was going to use the COVID nineteen emergency as an opportunity to traffic a large amount of marijuana, traveling several hours to King of Prussia to make this transaction. Um, well, if these people need their medicine. Meanwhile, over in the UK, you've got the outlaw who's passing out toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and we and getting because praise. of and, and for free and getting praise. And we don't even know if that's what this woman was intending on doing or whether she was going to sell it or not. And even if she sells it, it she's got to make about... back her uh, apparently two thousand dollars a pound. It's not a bad deal. It's no bad deal. I mean, I'm glad the cops are actually doing proper math for a chance or change. That's not tragic. It's not tragic at all. Usually, right, so usually she, like they'll, they'll be like, woman caught with three grams of cannabis, street value, one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. And they got their thumb on the scale. Good on the uh, Maryland Police Department for at least doing their math. But Maryland has a market now, so, so they really can't get away with price gouging. And Her ransom, which she can't afford, is $150,000. Um, she's 24 years old, $150,000 to a 24 year old. Let's just say 10% for a bond. Uh, that's still $15,000. When I was 24, I don't think I had more than maybe $2,000 of property to my name. Dude. Um, so that's, that's insane. Cruel and unusual so, punishment. So, so we've have, got have rules against that. We've got a young lady who reported that by the way. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I just made it go away here because the different news outlets are you know. so it was from timesherald.com a media news group posted 17 Times hours Herald. ago com. so i mean that's probably like a little local paper but i mean basically uh and, and and if the platoon site were still running we'd tell you the truth you've got god bless her this this poor girl looks so super sad yeah. i don't want to post her face all over the place but so you've got uh You've got a group of men who have not been threatened or provoked, or women. You've got, and they wear badges and these fancy uniforms and these cool little hats, okay? And they decide that they're going to wiretap this lady's phone or, her privacy. or and, and then send, it sounds like, uh, considering that there were three people on the scene and only one arrest, they were going to have people misrepresent themselves and lie to her in order to uh, get her to show up in a dark parking garage. Well, before that happened, they had to invade her, her space in some way to interact with her prior to that. Right. So on a falsehood, um, entrapment. And, and then they, they, when she shows up peacefully, they stalk a young woman by well, herself in her car and they follow her into a dark parking garage. They lure her. Okay, if, if this happened to me, if, if I saw somebody following me into a garage at 24 years old, my father would have prompted me to call the police for safety. But this was the police that are following her. And then they abduct her by gunpoint. They steal $200,000 worth of her property. And say that she has to give them two hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand in order to get out. This is some Al Capone shit. He Al Capone would be so profitable and so ecstatic. He'd be proud of America if he were around right now. Yeah, he'd be talk so about a shakedown proud of the politicians for the way that they are operating, just like he would in his organization. You know, who cares? Well. You put badges on them, they can hold guns to your face. It's absolutely disgusting. The worst part about it to me is that after they do all of this, then they shame this woman on the media and post her face everywhere and then have pictures of her property displayed out with the police, you know, holding their thumbs up like they're they've done some sort of great service for the country and for their community. And instead, they've just ruined some poor girl's life. Yeah, and yet you're supposed to be guilty until, or, you know, proven innocent. In, innocent until proven guilty. But you're typically guilty until proven innocent, as we've all seen before. And especially in the face of the public. Right, they're posting your face all over. You haven't even been found guilty of the crime, right? I mean, let's say it's not hers or, or some circumstantial evidence leads to that. It doesn't, shouldn't matter anyway. But let's, let's just say somehow she gets, she found, gets not found not guilty. Well, now she's still like... That's her that's... Google hit forever. Anyone that Googles her name, there is her charge. 
And how is that not cruel and unusual? It's disgusting. And it, it ruins people's lives. And then once they get driven to the very lowest point, um, they, they start using bad coping mechanisms. Whether it's hard drugs, whether it's shopping, whether it's being recluse and you alcohol. know alcohol. I mean, you could, there's a, we don't have time to make a list of bad coping mechanisms, but you get there. And then once you're doing that, then they shame you even more. And, and nobody stops to say, hey man, what's going on, right? So it's important. And that's why I stress past the compassion is you don't ever, you know, and even if somebody comes at me with a less than nice attitude, I, I might not like the way that, that they're acting, uh, the way that they're living or how destructive they're being, but I will never pass judgment on their situation. And even if as a human being, your mind gets a first impression about somebody unfairly, you're a human being. You have, you have the choice to check yourself. Before you wreck yourself. Before you wreck yourself. Better <laughs> check yourself and, and realize, because there have been times in your life, everybody watching this right now, I know I can say, uh, where you have been less than what you would like to be to your friends and your family. And imagine if that were out against you all the time. It's really important for us to remember we're all human. Imagine right if I could Google that about <laughs> you and find out the worst thing that you know, you've ever done to your family, and that's what they're doing to this poor woman before she's even been found guilty in... It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. I'm kind of glad that we're all kind of staying inside now. Um, I feel like there's going to be less harassment in the cannabis community just because, you know, we're inside now. I'm kind of concerned about the people getting their cannabis if we're not going to be able to travel aside from a non... Maybe meet at the grocery store parking lot because that's one of the... You're allowed to go to Walmart, but you can't go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Michael chimed in. Michael, I'm sorry. I can't... I don't, I don't want to butcher your last name. Seska? Seska? Michael chimed in and said the police have unfortunately gotten away from their motto to serve and protect. Uh, and I'm going to tell this story quick because I've told it in Siska. length a couple of times. Siska. <laughs> Siska and the Siska. No. <laughs> um, no, but the, the, my, my, my father was a Baltimore City police officer for 23 years. He was a baker. He got drafted to Vietnam as military police. And he loved serving the, the, the troops over there and, and you know, acting I don't know, however, the MP acts. And then he came back and he continued to be a beat cop in Baltimore City. He came home fiery, fiery angry one day. I heard my docile, calm, even emotion father say the F-bomb. I can't even say it talking oh, about it because it's that, that weird. Word. For like the first... No, th this was the first time and I only heard it twice from him in his entire life. Uh, but... He was angry because they say their motto every year. Like, you know, they put their hand up and there's this little ceremony. They do their thing and they go over there. Their credo. And in the credo said, what Michael said, to serve and protect. Their job was to serve and protect the community. That's been the function of the police forever. Somewhere around 1996, to the best of my recollection, I think it was 96, 95. Uh, they took to serve and protect, that verbiage, to serve and protect out of their credo. And they replaced it with to uphold the law. And he was fiery angry because that's not what he signed up for. And then after this change happened, of course, they went over with them how they're not allowed to, you know, give anybody a break. If you find some guy drunk on the street, don't take him home to his wife peacefully anymore, mister. I almost said my father's last name. Shh. Mr. G.I. Mary Jane, don't, don't, don't take them home to, to their wife to, uh, to be to be safe and go to sleep for the night, you lock them up. And, and that was the norm. And if we don't, if we catch you cutting slack for anybody in the best interest of the community, in the best interest of upholding the peace and serving and protecting the community, you're going to lose your job. Yeah. We're going to, that's, yeah, it's too bad. They took away the reality that everything's situational, right? So you can't say, uh, oh, well, because you're drinking in public it's bad. It Maybe. took away the officer's discretion. Like, does this person need to go to jail to protect the community, or does he need to just go home? Yeah. And a lot of times, sending him home is what's going to make him grateful the next day and less apt to use those bad coping mechanisms. But if you put him in a cage and strip him naked and, and, and de dehumanize him, I don't know if any Give of him you a number. have ever been locked up before, but they do what they can to make you feel less than human. That's a tactic in books that doesn't help that person that gives them somebody to blame and be angry at and that only continues 
their destructive behavior and eventually it stops being destructive to the individual and starts being destructive to people to the community them. they cr the police literally create the thing that they're trying to stop it's uh it's pretty crazy and you while know? you're in jail you learn other coping mechanisms because you meet people who are in there for for different types of drugs so your coping mechanisms aren't always necessarily healthy or no, or you make promises to a, to a future. Yeah, you make promises to people in there that live in your town, and when when you, you know maybe you just said it because you didn't want to get beat up in the in the cell block, right? But when when they get out and you get out, they're going to expect you to keep up those promises. Say you say you, oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll buy your heroin when we get out or something, right? And you didn't really mean that in the block. You were just scared. Well, you you got a small town now. This person's going to be approaching you. I mean, the the dangerous situations that jail creates. Because it, there are violent people in there. There actually are violent people. And they're people. mixed with non-violent people. It's, uh, it's, it's disgusting. Oh, Robert Stringer just po uh, chimed in. Bobby, I gotta call you Bobby. I met Bobby at a head PE show in November, just before I headed off for the end the Fed tour that Corona ended. I'm <clears throat> fucking you, Corona. Fuck you. Respectfully. Um... But Bobby is an amazing mind of freedom and a warrior of light. This guy understands, you know, just like what we were just explaining, that the government is what's creating the chaos within our communities. It generally, if you leave people to their own divisiveness, it's, it's, it's fine because we eliminate that divisiveness. We start seeing each other, at least within our own little local communities, that's where it starts, as equals, you know what I mean? Even... As neighbors. As neighbors. They don't care where you're from, what you do, what church you go to or don't go to. They know that this works here. And then when they go to their church, they know that's a separate community, right? So it's if you, human beings have the ability to function pretty much ungoverned, you know, it's not ungoverned. You need a governance, but a, a voluntary and non-forced method a con a consenting thereof, a consensual form of governance where if you don't want to live under those particular rules they can leave and you can find somewhere else where there's people who think like you and i mean that's really what this country was set up to it function was supposed as. To be. that was the original design and um i hope if anything and i'll keep saying this because all the states are making different rules about whether or not to quarantine, whether you have to wear masks, what clothes, what isn't. And at the end of this, we're all going to decide whether our state representatives represented us the way that we wanted to. Um, and maybe that'll give us a better understanding of why we need to focus on a more localized form of government moving forward. There are a lot of us, man. Somebody in Colorado having a, a group of dudes in suits 1500 miles away from them that don't even live like they do making decisions for their life how does that even well make the sense? way it's currently set up is the feds get to make the bottom line rules and then the states have to follow suit and they can make things more strict if they want sometimes we've had they've kind of rebelled against that with the decram of some drugs and with legalization of cannabis but um that is kind of how it's set up where the feds but what if it was the other way around where you can the feds can't override local government Ooh. what if it was the other way around something to think about something really That's to think about what it used to be um would you like to hit this and catch up on the comments i'm not reading yeah michael says they don't want us to talk to each other and realize that we are more similar than we think um that's so true right like we all have the same culture we were raised in the same nation uh, the same language for the most part. There's a m melting pot in our country and we have a lot of different cultures But we all still share that one American culture um, or Western culture for the most part and We are more similar like even the redneck in Texas with the hipster in LA could probably find quite a bit of common ground um, so it's better to keep the people divided because otherwise, who would we turn on? We can be divided in region, but united in values. Even even if that division means, you know, divided by the way you think, right? You've got a community of people who want to be, you know, uh, Satan-worshipping nudist pot smokers. <laughs> right? You don't want to be 
I'm Satan worshiping, Nudist pot worship, wait, pot worshiper. Like, that's what you do. You want to be a pot worshiper. You know? And so you got a group of people that want to live the way that, and you don't understand it, right? But at the end of the day, we're all united in the value of, well, I should be able to live my way and you should be able to live your way. And so long as you're not hurting anybody, it's not on me to force you to live any way that you don't want to. You're raised like that. I, I was I was an only child, but <clears throat> you had brothers or sisters? Like, how many times did your mom and dad have to drill into your head? Like, no, it's okay if your brother's into music and, and you're into sports. Like, that's cool. You guys are allowed to be different. But then all of a sudden we grow up and all that stuff that we're taught, don't hit, don't steal, Everything you need lie, to learn. All goes out the window. Everything you ever needed to know about how to get through life, you learned in kindergarten. And you might, some of you might even be teaching it to your kids right now. Pretty much. Pretty much. Past that, it's all academics and uh, science and things like that. But no, we all get our set of morals pretty early in life. And it's just from watching others. And I think we've evolved as a human culture enough to... Not need a babysitter. You've got to have a hall pass in some states to drive around, folks. Otherwise, the hall monitor. A hall. I mean, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll give you your right to drive list. Your essential employee permission slip. It's it's a. Are you kidding me right now? Why is everybody okay with this? Yeah, we haven't had martial law. We have a declaration of of an emergency, but they are taking away your right to they're debating whether or not to take the second amendment they're debating whether or not we have to wear masks which i understand the concern but to force us to dress a certain way um and they're taking away a lot of people's rights to cross interstate lines which is still a constitutional right no rights have been suspended they arrested that guy for paddle boarding alone in the ocean um he was not exposed to anyone until the police showed up to kidnap him. Isn't that fun? Um, and I'm not, my personally, I don't believe that it's the government's job to protect us from ourselves. It's not their job to take care of us. It's not their job to protect us from ourselves. And somehow we have just handed that over to our government babysitters. Like we can't do it ourselves. And it's, it's hard to watch. And then they seem to use every little excuse to take more rights from you, which brings me to the food bank story um, that NBC reported on. Um, on the fourth day of 420, um, this was written by Nicole. The fourth day, that'd be 4-4-2020. 4 4 I <laughs> dig it. Um, so, headline reads, two children hospitalized after eating THC candy from a food bank. I'm, I'm laughing because, sure, I, I would, in the same instance take my kid to the hospital what is in my child i don't know but no right uh what happened but the I headlines had, I extreme that with my dog before yeah the headlines extreme like they always are um at least two children are hospitalized after eating thc candy from a food bank in utah an 11 year old and a five-year-old were taken to a hospital friday night after consuming medicated nerds rope uh, so candy is what oh, it looks like good. and they've been fussing about that too in the in the industry whether or not they want that stuff to look like that um, families, I'm sorry, given to a, the families as part of a food distribution effort from a church working with the Utah Food Bank. Uh, Roy City Police said volunteers at the food bank distributed more than 60 bags that contained three to four servings of the candy rope. <laughs> Labels on Somebody. the candy indicate that each one contained 400 milligrams of THC. Oh, that wow. is incredibly, that's a lot. That's a lot. Those kids had a bad, bad, bad. Yeah, bad, they probably bad time. weren't too comfortable. They were not too comfortable at all. And uh, I'm sure that the parents were terrified. They probably didn't know what was going on with their kids. I but, would be terrified too. But as a parent, I wouldn't give my kid this without, like, I, if you look at the picture, I mean, it's it's it says really big on it, 400 milligrams THC. There's no mistaking this. Um, I'm curious so, if they got it from a church um, that they trusted the source of food. Um, maybe something. To think I about. Yeah, that's true, too. And you can't be crazy checking your kids' food. Um, but it, what I'd be concerned about is is who who did that, man. Like, which one of you six donors out there took some nerds candy into a food bank? But maybe that's not what happened. Maybe somebody was cleaning out the house of a recently deceased relative who knows 
and decided to take everything in their food pantry to the food bank. So um, I really hope that they don't end food distribution programs because of this, because, you know, they're using every little excuse to take our freedoms right now. And typically it's the, the, the good things that they take from us, the things that will actually help benefit you, mind, body, and soul. And uh, I hope that doesn't happen um, with this. Uh, they say that right now we do not believe, nor do we have any evidence to support the donation was intentional. We've discussed this issue with our local food bank, and it appears to be an accident. Uh, this comes from Police Sergeant Matthew Gwynn. Uh, Utah, Utah Food Bank President and CEO apologized to all the families who may have received this product. We're absolutely horrified that this went out. Yada, yada, <coughs> yada, yada, yada. So I suspect that some of those families were pretty stoked to find some weed edibles in their food bank. Yeah, man. And I've got no I've got no qualm with food bags giving out weed or weed edibles as long as it's consensual. Consensual and you know what you're getting. And I mean that's just fine. Um Michael says my uh my first problem is the story is the fact that all these edibles are clearly marked as to what they are. Um fair point. My second issue is the fact that even if the child did eat that, it's going to cause a child no problems. Mm. Which is also true, but um for the most part, you can't overdose on marijuana. We know that. Um, however, if you don't know what is going on with your child, if you didn't put two and two together, uh, you would probably take your child into the doctor to find out. Dude, and you're you're putting your child through a ridiculously traumatic experience, too. Uh, it, it's not fun. It, weed's not for everybody. I know grown adults that are like, oh, I feel like shit when I smoke weed. No, thank you. And that's that's fair, man. I feel like shit when I drink beer, but I don't like, you know... Uh, whatever it, it's consent is so important but these kids know it's like yeah true it won't hurt them physically okay it won't hurt them uh, but it could it, it really could if there's some sort of pre-existing issue and there's you know it, it, it really it, it absolutely could uh, but it, it, it is going to hurt that child because it it's going to be put through a traumatic experience that it will never ever forget and not simply the high but now a doctor's visit you know, and who knows what they poked and prodded them with in order to get them sober. Um, I think they just give you fluids. Yeah, Cheetos would be pretty cool. I, do yeah, it. yeah. actually, the only comment on the post, and I thought this was was funny, um, from Nate Davis. He said, give him some pepper and just let him sleep. <laughs> and for yeah, pepper, if you're too high, black pepper will bring you down some. For anybody who didn't know that, CBD will kind of interact or, or counteract. Mm -hmm. The effects of that THC high too. So I've been through that not with a child, but with my dog. I came home and um, I didn't know what had happened yet. But my dog was, she's like five to eight pounds right here. All cute as a button. Um, yeah, and she was not acting herself, not able to move very well, um, very shaky. And I was uh, concerned that she might have gotten some medications that I did have at the time. Um, you know, and it was the middle of the night and I rushed her to the puppy ER $200 later to find out that she was just really stoned. Um, and that, you know, as soon as I found that out, I was no longer concerned because I know that concerned, she's going to be okay. Right? Um, and I was like, oh, kind of embarrassed because now <laughs> I was so scared. Um, well hit that. So they, they call me the next day though. And they were like, do you have a lighter? Do you have it over there? Oh damn, I do. Don't they call me the next day and they no, say, so how's Zag doing? And I was like, she's good. We watched Spongebob all night and ate <laughs> Cheetos. And then even they laughed. <laughs> That's all that needs to happen. And it's already 5 o'clock. What do you know? We started at 420. We started at 420-ish. 410. Um, but it is time to get going. Because I need to get some food in my belly. <laughs> yeah, we're going to eat some Corona. Corona! A little bit of that soup. It's a spice now. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> It should be. That'd be cute. <laughs> Kayla just tuned in. Hi, <laughs> Kayla. Hello, Kayla. Yeah, and I wanted to go over, and I'm just going to post it. I already did. Um, there was a really cool graph somebody posted this morning. Uh, the fear zone, or, or what, what zone do you fit within? And I know you can't read that because of the glare and because of the whole backwards thing, um, but this was really eye-opening. Um, so they separate <laughs> into four different zones. Uh, you're in the fear zone, the learning zone, the growth zone, and the action zone. Um, and I'm going to start off tomorrow at 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Central, um, going over this because I read through this. 
you know, I'm just now thinking that, that this really, this applies to a lot of things in life, not just the virus. Um, and I think it's going to be a cool tool for me uh, and maybe for you guys to, you know, do a little bit of self-examination through this crisis and any other crisis that you might face in your lives. Uh, did you see this one yet? Yeah, you showed me. I haven't actually inspected it, so I'm excited to hear you. The words are really tiny, so... You know, even with me specs, it's hard. But we'll pop you, up you can laptop. post that to your Facebook wall. Yeah, it's um actually it's the post. It's already on. Right underneath of us. Yeah, Mary Jane. Um, and I'll say it again. Go on to YouTube, please. Head on over, subscribe to the channel. Uh, once we get to a thousand likes over there, or a thousand subscribers, likes or Facebook, so I can't keep up with my social medias. Uh, but once we get to a thousand, we can do some cool these. interactive uh, show things. So I really like to interact with the community. It looks like we're all going to be shut down for some time, at least through our one, one chance in 100 years to have 20 days of 420. And I'm devastated. I'm absolutely devastated. We want to hang out with y'all. So, and yeah. we can't. So we're doing this. So we're doing this. It's good time. It's good time. What do we do? Oh, Michael chimed back in and said he'd be worried about his child yeah. also. And yeah, it's... It's good. You got time. a first time viewer. Oh, hey, Ronald. Thanks. Ronald. Thanks for tuning in, man. You're at the end of the show. Let's do a hit for Ronald, though. Yeah, hit for Ronald. And, uh, this one's for you, Ron. Ron, can I call you Ron? What are you smoking on right I'm gonna now? I'm going to call bro? him Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. This lighter is on its last leg. <laughs> Way better days, man. This pipe. This pipe is killer. <clears throat> so much of your experience has to do. <clears throat> <laughs> with the pipe you're smoking out of it's true it's true um ron says sorry but i believe this virus is really 5g radiation sickness and you know what that may be something we find out down the road problem we have now is the same problem we have with everything is the mainstream media pops up and acts like they're experts of everything and they do whatever they can to mislead the public instead of simply presenting them with facts and letting them make their own decisions so maybe we can all get on board with that I know a lot of people that tune into the show uh, do. So that's a positive thing. Thank you, Warriors. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Do you got any plugs for the day? Plugs, plugs, plugs. I have... I could plug Rabbit Side. Yeah, yeah, All man. Right. We just got the freedom. Why not? Just... Uh, we're at Camp Freedom. This is a... Um off-grid community. I've got some really good friends of mine. They're called Rabbit Side. They run an off-grid um eco-friendly camp and you can check them out on fa i'm sorry on instagram on facebook and on youtube they have a great yeah. youtube channel if you just look up rabbit side you'll see them they have t-shirts you can buy um they have a website rabbitside.com good friends of mine um yeah and they do awesome stuff they make apple butter it's almost as good as my apple butter, but I infuse my apple <laughs> butter. Uh, and they have this awesome, like, just just go check it out, man. I was completely blown away by how minimalistic these people live, but how much they produce and how they, they, they thrive and flourish in this climate that's akin to Death Valley. Death uh, Valley. It it's... gets 125 there in the summer, and they've grown cannabis right there out of the ground. They have grown um they've got chickens they've got ducks so they collect eggs they have grown peppers and food uh they have a pond with fish and snails and frogs they've got tortoises oh my um <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get chicken soon so you guys look forward to that as soon as i get some chickens i'll definitely be uh showing off my chickens because i've never i've never done chickens before hey, by the way how old were you when you figured out the joke why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side mm -hmm. is about the chicken dying when it crossed the road and it got to the other side i was this many days old see that was like a year ago for me and it blew my fucking mind i still don't get it to the other side <sighs> like to break on through to the, to other, the other side to, get to the other side it died probably got hit by a car <laughs> right that's why the chicken crossed the road what? you're welcome the you, bird you is heard the it word. here. The bird but is yeah, the Mary word. Jane first. <laughs> All right, guys. Any final comments? Oh, Steve Austin is watching. Steve Austin is stone cold. Is no? 
No. Okay. No, but it's Stone Cold Awesome in Maryland. Steve uh, used to manage to Mescal Dispensary, which is now called... Oh, I left Maryland. I forget. I know they rebranded, um, but, but Steve it was monumental in the Maryland medical cannabis community. In terms, Steve introduced me to Miss Cindy Fox, who runs Nature's Care and Wellness, which helps people get registered in Maryland. And Cindy has turned into like she's she's a mother, aunt, sister, and like she's amazing. I love Cindy and I love Steve for all the connections he's made and all the people he's helped in Maryland. And uh, I hope you keep tuning in, Steve. I'm going to try to be doing the best I can to uh, be on time, which I am obviously not today, but it's laundry day, y'all. So we got clean clothes. We got though. clean clothes, yo. Uh, but 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Eastern, right before Adam's show, um, which airs at noon. Pacific 3 Eastern, um, he keeps you up to date with all the corona craziness. I mean, everything changes every day and contradicts each other, and it's... Steven, Steve Austin said living room. Yeah! Is it... That's where we're hanging out? He's Steve not stone room. cold, he's living room, <laughs> Steve Austin. <laughs> Kayla says, what, you guys just travel everywhere. I wish. I don't know how to travel everywhere, but I do travel where I can. Um, everywhere, I don't know if I got time for everywhere, but I don't, I would, like if I could live could. a thousand years, yeah, I would travel every single where. If we could. And Kayla, actually, this is the, the, All the, the most still I've been, um, Kayla, uh, I'm not sure how long you've been following, but I've been on tour with the Adam Kokesh for not president campaign, uh, following all the libertarian state conventions since November. So we've been consistently on the road I and mean, we had to be at a California convention and then in Florida. Um, I left the campaign tour bus to go to Vegas to handle some other business. And all of a sudden the Corona apocalypse happens. My flight gets canceled and I decide to hang out with Zig here. And we go from Lake Mead to Lake have a, have a sue to we've we we slowly but surely because nobody was expecting to have to move around and no the airline didn't give me my money back they gave me air credit for a flight i don't even know if i'll ever be able to take so that's fun or want thanks. to take during corona thanks guys uh, but no, and, and, you know, I've just been riding that wave, you know, that I can't, I can't control all of this. What's, what's, what's it you say, man, say it. Uh, humans, humans plan and the universe laughs. The universe laughs. The universe laughs. <laughs> Good luck with those plans. So, yeah. guys. I was supposed to be in Vegas for two weeks and then back on the bus. And then we were actually supposed to be in Colorado yesterday for the Colorado state convention, right next to a hot spring that I was totally looking forward to visiting because Colorado is where I thought I was living. Uh, but now. I am living with my family here on uh, Freedom Ranch, and Zig was able to come, and we are just growing this family, and this bug out team is amazing, and we're, we are self-sustaining the hell out of things, uh, but we're just getting started, so uh, you're going to have to tune in, tune in to Adam's show. Uh, you can find all his information at thefreedomline.com, um, and we'll be updating you from there on all the cool stuff that we're doing here after I get done smoking this with y'all every day. Good times. Good times. Good times. And this is all beat up. I don't know. Do you want to try to get one last hit on uh, this? No, thing? I'm okay. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for any comments that I missed. There's like an awkward 15 second delay on here. If you have any questions or if you're interested in joining us uh, via Zoom on YouTube or you want to get involved in the discussion by putting your two cents in, you can email me at joey at thefreedomline.com. That is J O I E at thefreedomline.com, not, well, Joey like a little boy is how you say it, but how do you say it in French? Joie, joie, at the Freedom Line, but I'm from North Baltimore, so they call me Joey. I'm gonna start calling you joie. Joie. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know French. I don't know Spanish either. I'm, I'm monolingual. I know enough Spanish to get beat up. I really wish that I did take a language in high school. Uh, but I took auto tech instead. No, I took Latin, but we just learned like mythology and stuff, which was badass. Badass. I'm pretty sure my entire English department smoked a fat, healthy joy at least three times a day during the work day. I'm just saying, because their demeanor was awesome. They were great at communicating with us kids. Uh, we learned. It was calm. 
and now I'm babbling. It's such a great way to learn, isn't it? Isn't it? All right, we're going to get out of here, y'all. See you tomorrow morning or afternoon, depending on what coast you're on, at 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Eastern, uh, for day 7 of 420 Quarantine Virtual Sesh. As always, I will remind you to pass joints, not judgment, because we are all in this together. And I am going to GTFOH. Kisses.